couple of things off my to-do list. This is uh, a little filter house here. I call it a filter house. It's the next one in line with the... It's right on the side of the house. Next one in line from the uh, uh, water wheel. So you can see... Well, if I turn the light off, you can see. Hold on. Let's see. See, I got a little crack there where I can see the light. Well, that's so uh, whenever the light is on, other than me forgetting to turn off that light, which is right here. The other mechanisms I have, I just got all the plumbing done. I used to just before a little while ago. That went up 90 over and then 90 right back down. I just got around to getting all the <coughs> plumbing installed. So that comes up where that valve is right there. comes up out of the ground from the well house. comes up, runs through that, I think it's a 30 micron or 300, I can't remember. Anyway, then tees in after it's filtered. That goes into the house. That comes up, goes over, and if you want to know how to make a really good freeze-proof faucet, there it is. There's the valve, and there it is going outside, and that's a faucet, right? Them freeze-proof pieces of, excuse my French, you know what I mean? Can't stand them things. But, all you have to do during the winter, turn that valve off and open that let it drain freeze through faucet there you go now how do you keep this shit from freezing in here that's pretty simple there's two thermo uh, uh thermo thermo well uh, i was gonna see if you could see the name on it there's one that one i've forgotten what the name of it is you can't see it but anyway, you can see one of them turns on at 35, the other one it turns off at 45, that one turns on 38, and turns off at 50, so the yellow one comes on first. I've got it unplugged at the moment because this thing, this heater's about three years old, and it just shot its wad, and uh, it just went pop. So anyway, but I plug it in there, when it gets down to 38 degrees, that little heater comes on, which I have to replace now, in the uh, last two, three years. And if for some reason that thing's out and doesn't work, then the one below it, when it gets to 35, kicks on, and that's two 200 watt light bulbs. And you don't need, you know, this is insulated good, and so a 40 watt would actually do it. But if I see, that's the reason why I was showing you the light a while ago. I didn't have it totally sealed up. <coughs> For some reason, I walk by here and I see a light coming through that door. <coughs> I know either number one, I forgot to turn off the light switch, or my heater failed and my backup lighting system that keeps us warm is turned on. All right. And here's another type of uh, you know, Honeywell. It's another one of those thermostat. Uh, thermostatically controlled outlet, I guess is what you call them. And it goes, it plugs in, and then you get electricity coming off of it. So I'm just getting ready. And by the way, that is a yarn filter, whole house yarn filter. And that is one of those micron screen filters. They both do just about the same. If you had trouble with uh, rust in your bathtubs and stuff like that then the yarn filter is the best way to go because it will actually filter out a decent amount of that where this will not but on general purpose if you don't have trouble with iron that's the way to go because especially this one that particular brand twist clean lakos that's a pretty good one because here you flip that up and turn this and it goes from a run mode to a flush mode. Then you open this valve, and I still have to get my uh, 
half inch uh, threaded, male threaded to the uh, female hose or to a male hose where I can screw the female end of a hose on and just keep a hose in here and screw it on. <clears throat> but if you leave the water on down there and you turn that to the flush position and open that and just psh, let it go, it'll flush that screen clean. And if it doesn't for some reason, sometimes it gets really gunked up, you know, then you just spin this off, pull the screen out, Take a little soft, soft brush and uh, like a wore out toothbrush or something and just put it in a bucket of water and uh, swish it a couple of times and stick it right back in there. If you don't have this closed up someplace and you let light get to it, that's how we're going to grow algae. And that's what these are for. But I'm not going to put that on there because I don't need it because this is pretty dark whenever you can close the door. And that won't be a problem. But, and one other thing, guys. That valve right there is a ball valve. But you see that little screw thing on the side of it? That allows you to turn that water off. Right there, when you turn the valve off and open that little screw. And that will drain any of that water just sitting there. Then you can drain that, uh, open that, that valve right there. And, uh doesn't do much for the line going down here that goes into the house but that's just a quick fix but the real way to do that is to fix a way to where you can um, apply air to the plumbing and blow it out and uh, I think I've got a video on that or may not but anyway let me show that to you all right so that is all of my valves that go different places up here because this is uh you know rafting company in my personal house and all that shit and so i've, <laughs> I've got a so let me just i'll go into that but anyway so this is a big huge water tank 80 gallon by the way don't waste your money on these big huge tanks there's a brand out there little short thing half this size that's the same 80 gallons i can't remember the name of that tank right off the top of my head right now but it has a uh, internal bladder and the water is in the bladder it doesn't hit the outside of the tank so it don't rust out bad either now i've got them everywhere but here i'm waiting on this one to go out when it goes out and replace it but when you look at that that's where the water comes out of the bottom of the tank that's where it comes out of the well and that's where they mix so whenever the well comes on water's forced up into the tank the bladder gets under pressure and that's how you get your pressure there's the main shut off then i come up and right back down and i go into the ground and out here to all these valves but also what i do is tee off there and right there is a air fitting with a little ball valve so I can turn my main valve off, shut the water off, then open that, let it <coughs> breathe a little bit, and uh, hook up my air to it. These pumps run about 45 to 65 usually, right? And so you hook up your uh, air uh, tank to that, your regular air hose, and now you can pressurize your whole system. You can do... Uh, pressure test and all that. In fact, I just got to do it one. I see, I, I still got it out. But anyway, so this is what I have here. So to the well, and I just take a picture and then go inside and notate it. To the well, so the well's up here inside. And then to the freeze, uh, I'm sorry, to the freeze proof left of the well, red. And that's that freeze proof faucet right there next to the well. And then there is the main shutoff, well and freeze proof, uh, active only when closed. Here is to the house to a PVC ball valve, which is now a brass ball valve with a drain. And then it comes down here. That's one initial shutoff, so I can leave the house, the house and the freeze proof going, and shut everything else off for the winter. Then down here I have a valve and 
something's eating away at that. So, but what that says goes to the river well across the street. And this one here goes downstairs to paddle in. So if I ever forget, which sometimes I do, because you fool around with this shit twice a year, right? So, show you something else. Go, because you got to get your valves down in the ground far enough where they don't freeze, right? Well, a good way to do that. I have big hands, so I have to use six inch. But I just put a little rope on there. Pull that off. And you can see the valve down in there. All right, that one's open. This next one is open. The one going across the street right now is closed. Oh, I got it open right now, too. That's right, I was testing it a while ago. Um, still have a little bit of work. I need to go ahead and close that one because I was pressure testing it, and I'd cut it and put a cap on it. And now I need to put it back together, so I made this uh, T-handle with a little channel deal on the end of it. I'm just stick it down there, put it on that, and then twist it. And now it's closed. All right. So that's the one that goes across the street to the river well. And this is the one that goes downstairs. And I'm, I have not blown anything out yet. Water's still on. It's not gotten cold enough yet for me to blow everything out but just to let you know why why in the world would i do all that shit huh um down there is my cabins the river where you see those lights down there okay well there's a well down there to the right of those lights and it goes up underneath the road comes up goes right there so i can open that if for some reason this well fails open that valve now i'm running the other well so back in here, same scenario. There's those two. Uh, that one's called Thermo Cube, by the way. I can see it now. That white one's Thermo Cube. So I got that same two set up here. There's my light bulbs. And there's a the little electric heater. So if you guys want a good way to uh, deal with all that. Same scenario. The only light that comes through here is this little crack right here. That little crack. So if I see lights on in there, I know the well, uh, heater's not working. But I do know I just tested the heater. And uh, right now, I know the heater works. I don't, I'm don't. i not 100% certain if the thermocouple works. Thermocube or whatever. But when it gets cold, it'd be easy enough. By the way, if you ever do this, you need to take a uh, grinder, bevel the top, cut this a couple places around and take you some sandpaper and thin this down otherwise you'll have a hell of a time putting them on getting them off you can tell they've been there a while but anyway i figured you guys might uh somebody having to deal with the freezing shit might want some uh tips and tricks on that all right i need to get out here in the shop and do a little bit of work but i'm still fixing boats i'm down to those two, that one over there, and that one on top, I think is just about finished. 707 on the other top is finished. Those two bottom boats and that one right there, got a floor seam problem. And then those boats over there are finished. Those are waiting to go back in the container. I'm almost shut up. I had to replace some LED lights today. I had one up there and one in, in the back of the shop. I was trying to get some stuff done. And I figured I'd stop and go ahead and get that knocked out. But anyway, so I guess we'll title this video Water Filter House or something like that. Or Freeze Proof Faucet or How to Protect Your Well in the Winter. Plumbing or whatever shit, I don't know. But anyway, there y'all go. Take care. Hope that helps somebody. All right, well, I mentioned this a while ago, but I stopped that recording before I uh, got finished. But uh, here is the uh, 
little pressure tester. And I've never used it here, but I had a guy, the reason I started all this plumbing crap, I had a guy run into a ditch. And, uh, and when he ran into a ditch, he missed my plumbing, but the wrecker got it when he was pulling him out. So, But I went over there before that, and I cut it off, so at least it didn't rip it loose. It just broke it where it was at. But here's a good pressure uh, pressure setup. So I can actually do one inch and a quarter I can test pressure at one inch uh, inch and a quarter or one inch or three quarter or half inch or you'll never do a quarter inch but this is an air fitting you know that goes on the end of an air hose so that's what I ended up having to do while ago because and I showed you the uh, well house the previous video I had the uh, where I could put the air in it. Well, this is another way to do that. So I slip this on the end of that, or you could screw it on. Uh, you know, remove a faucet, or you could even put your know, hose. You know, uh, hose uh, faucet to hose, like a female or male hose, and put something like that on the bottom end of this. I've never had to do that, or you can make a separate deal. But anyway, so. You go from the gauge all the way down. There's a Schrader valve like you have on a bicycle tire to air up the bicycle tire. And so depending on what I want to use it for, I can either plug it into what I've got set up out there or I can screw in a uh, uh, half inch here, three quarter inch here or here, and one inch here and an inch and a quarter here. So, And then you just put the pressure on it. And 40 to 60 pounds is what they normally run, water systems. So if you put 45, 50, 60 pounds in there, 65, 70 if you want, and uh, just let it sit there for a while, you can tell whether you got a leak or not. And that was the purpose of me uh, adding this, 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 and this today. It was so I could test and make sure that nothing else was broke because the guy <laughs> ended up running into the ditch. And I wasn't sure if he jerked something loose somewhere else. But luckily, that was not the case. So there's one more thing you guys can easily build. If you got some, I always have parts hanging around, you know what I mean? Where I can build something like that. But I've had that thing for, geez, that whole rig, I bet you I've had that for 20 years. And have probably used it six or seven, eight, maybe ten times. Cheers, guys.